In this episode, we'll take a look at the Mix Assist feature on the Mix Pre Series recorders. First up, we're going to jump right into the demonstration using Mix Assist, not using Mix Assist, and comparing it to the Auto Mix feature on the Zoom F6. Please use your best quality headphones to listen to this. Okay, now Mix Assist is off. We are in the, our very live room. And we have lots of hard surfaces, wooden floors. Uh, maybe a 12-foot ceiling, would you say, at the peak over here? At the peak. Okay. And eight feet eight, right above us. Eight feet right above us, okay. Uh, so this is with Mix Assist off, and so this is what this sounds like. So let's talk a little bit about this country dancing, Scottish yes. and English. Yes. Is there a distinction between Scottish and English in yes. terms of the dance? Oh, there is. Okay. Oh, yes. Tell us about that. There are some moves that have the same names, but they're performed differently if it's a Scottish dance versus an English dance. Ah. And so there are differences in the steps and the move movements. Okay. Is the music the same? No. The music is different. Yes. Um, what are the kind of defining features of Scottish country dance music? It's a lot of reels and jigs and also some strathspeys, which are a special kind of Scottish tune. And then the English dances are older, generally, and so we have older music. So if people are familiar with John Playford, who is an English composer in the 1600s, it's that 1600s and 1700s era music. Okay. Playing which instrument? I was playing violin. Violin, okay, very good. And what type of uh, dance was this? This was a Scottish and English country dance. Scottish and English country dance, okay. Um, for those that aren't familiar with Scottish and English country dance, like myself, what is this like? Can you describe Scottish and country, Scottish and English country dancing? Sure. So what happens in these dances is some you pick a partner and you're with that partner the entire dance. And each dance um, lasts about 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes once it's been taught and run through it. So these are old style dances played to, or danced to acoustic music. So in our little band, we have two fiddles and a, and a keyboard. Okay. And it's, it's kind of like a club. It's very informal, and it's open to anybody who is interested. So there is a caller, and they walk through the dances, and then we play the music, and they dance it. Okay. Does the caller call while they're dancing, once, you, once you're playing oh, the music? Only if the dancers need the prompts. Okay. If it's a tricky, if it has some tricky moves in it. Okay. But normally they would teach them the dance first, and then you guys would play, and they would dance to the music that you're playing. I would say about <laughs> half to 75% of the time, the, the dance is prompted, but okay. to varying degrees. If people have, are getting it, then... The collar lays off. Yes. Okay, good. All right. Um, two fiddles and a piano. Yes. Interesting. Do the fiddles play the same part or different parts? Usually the same part. Sometimes we'll branch out and, and add a harmony or a different octave or something like that. Okay. And is that the defining instrumentation for this type of dancing? Two fiddles and a piano? No. Oh, okay. That's what we have. That's just what you have. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes what? our pianist will play the whistle. Scottish and English country dancing. Uh, are, are there any uh, kind of unique aspects to this dance that you don't see in any other type of dance? There are some moves that are unique. Okay. Uh, they, the English dancing in particular tends to be quite stately and that's reflected in the moves. Okay. Much more formal. It's much more formal. And some of the Scottish dancing is more formal as well. Okay. So at least in rel relation to like what I think of as American square dancing, mm -hmm. which is a lot, seems a lot less formal. Do you remember in Tucson, those concerts where the dancers would perform and they were dressed in their kilts and things the scottish country dancing mm -hmm. so yes it's very different from square dancing okay. from american yes. square dancing very okay very good all right um 
Let's talk a little bit about, you, you said there are different types of music that are typically played with this type of dancing. In, in the Scottish in particular, there were jigs. Yes. Strass bays. Yes. Uh, and there was a... There were reels. Reels, okay. So what's the main distinction? So I've heard of jigs and reels before. Strass bays is one that I don't think everyone's heard of, or maybe fewer people have heard of. What's the distinction between those three types of music? The rhythms. Okay. Jig is A jig is in... It's subdivisions of three, okay. reels and subdivisions of two, and so is a strass bay, but a strass bay has a lot of dotted rhythms. It's kind of like a galloping horse. Okay. Ah, very good. All right. Uh, okay. Thanks very much. You're very this welcome. It's been absolutely fascinating. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you found it interesting. Okay. What is Mix Assist? Mix Assist is an auto-mixing feature. It's especially useful for situations where you are miking multiple people, each with their own microphone. And what happens in those circumstances is that for the person who is not talking at a given time, their microphone is actually pulled down or faded back. Why is that important? Well, it results in a much cleaner recording overall. This is now available on these mix pre-models. You have to have firmware version 5.01 or higher. And there is a $99 licensing fee that you purchase over at the Sound Devices plug-in store. Put a link for that down below. Now, as we alluded to earlier, recording one microphone at a time is kind of a relatively straightforward thing to do. As soon as you have multiple mics on multiple people, things start to get a lot more complicated and it gets a lot more challenging in some ways to make a good recording unless you're doing some sort of mixing. And that can be done during the recording itself to make a stereo mix that sounds clean, or it can be done in post. In either case, it requires some effort and it requires some skill. So the Mix Assist feature automates some of that for you. Now, why can't you just put up a mic for each person? For example, for a panel discussion or an interview or a podcast, press record and go. Why is that not good enough? Well, what happens is for the people who aren't talking at any given time, the reverberation in the room or bleed from one mic to another, that is to say when person A is talking over on their mic, person B's mic is still open. And so some of the sound from person A is getting into person B's microphone. And that's going to create some phase issues. So it's going to degrade the overall quality of the sound that you're hearing. And of course, that's where Mix Assist solves some of those problems. What does it do? Here's the short version. Mix Assist helps make cleaner recordings straight out of the recorder when recording multiple people, each with their own microphone. It pulls down the level on microphones to which people are not currently talking. This makes it so that those mics aren't picking up room sound, reverberation, or the voice of a person speaking into a different microphone. At the same time, it keeps the overall gain between microphones at zero dB, meaning that when multiple people talk into their respective microphones at the same time, both are turned down so that the overall mix doesn't get too loud. For a longer version, we've put a link down below to the Mix Assist page over at the Sound Devices website. Download the user guide and you can see all of the different rules or operating principles that Mix Assist uses to result in these cleaner mixes. Now, as I mentioned before, you can do all of this manually in post, but it takes a significant amount of time depending on the project and how meticulous you're going to be. So for example, if you're recording a one hour podcast, it's gonna take at least in my estimation about two hours or more to do this type of mix yourself. Now you can do it in most digital audio workstations of course, but it's just a bit more work. So I think the obvious question that will come up is, should I buy it? Well, I don't, first of all, have any sort of vested interest in you buying this. I don't get any sort of benefit if you do. I purchased it with my own money, both my Mix Pre and the Mix Assist plugin. But to help you make that decision, I think it's a very simple, logical set of questions. And I think the first question is, do you do multiple mic, multiple person, interview, podcast, or panel discussion recordings a month? And if so, do you typically do that post work yourself or hire it out? And if so, I think in those circumstances, it probably does make sense to spend $99 to make it so you can automate a lot of that. Also, if you don't already do this and you already do these multiple person podcasts, panel discussions or interviews, and you want to add a little bit of polish to the overall quality of your sound, and you're willing to spend $99 for your audience to have a better audio recording, then yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. If you don't typically do multiple microphone recordings with multiple people, man, probably not worth it for you. The next question I'm sure we'll get is, is the Mix Assist better than the Zoom F-Series auto mix feature? And I think you should let your ears judge that by listening to the demos at the start here. The Zoom F6 has the same auto mix feature that the Zoom F4, F8, and F8N has, so it'll be pretty much the same on all those other recorders. And 
to my ears, it sounded a little bit cleaner on Mix Assist. So I think there are other people that may say, well, Mix Assist is a little bit too aggressive, although I found it to sound surprisingly transparent. It did a really, really nice job, I thought. So let your ears be the judge and make that decision yourself. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And I'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.